after 13 years of conservative rule, Britain is broken. Supermarket shelves are empty, inflation is skyrocketing, workers are striking, and the Tories have responded by deciding the country should be represented domestically and internationally by a billionaire that doesn't have one single working class friend. I have friends who are aristocrats, I have friends who are upper class, I have friends who are you know, working class, but I'm not working class. And loves taking money from poor people. To make sure that areas like this are getting the funding that they deserve. Because we inherited a bunch of formulas from the Labour Party that shoved all the funding into deprived urban areas. Then uh, they, you know, that needed to be undone. This billionaire believes the most simple everyday tasks should be made to look difficult, like opening a car door. Or calculating in real time how money jumps from a plastic card to a machine attached to the petrol station counter. Well, as the saying goes, cometh the hour, cometh the man. And that man is Sir Keir Rodney Starmer, a baby faced conservative with a small c, former director of public prosecutions who became a Labour MP in 2015. Sir Keir is the visionary that decided he wanted two Union Jacks following him during his leadership, a human rights lawyer that believes in human rights for everybody. This means choosing not to infringe on the human rights of a police officer by not prosecuting them after they killed Brazilian national John Charles de Menez. But his moralistic outlook would never stretch to supporting the human rights of bloodthirsty terrorists that were groomed at the age of 15 by an international terrorist group known for slick propaganda videos the CIA would be proud of. I'm Keir Starmer and I'm a proud trade unionist. Promoting every union action except the moments where greedy rail workers, nurses and teachers just want to inconvenience the ordinary citizen. A face business can trust. Business leaders love funding Kia, not because it will benefit them, but because it will benefit you, the worker. Environmentalism is a core tenant of this Labour Party. But when eco-terrorists start acting up, a robust approach is needed. Get up, go home. Um, I'm opposed to what you're doing. Um, it's not the way to deal with the climate crisis. And they should go home, not because Keir doesn't agree with the green agenda, but because he needs them to check that their homes are fully insulated with double glazed windows. We all know environmentalism starts at home. As an unashamed anti-racist, Sir Keir was able to rid the Labour Party of rancid anti-Semitism by expelling so many Jewish people that members won't have the opportunity to be racist. A leader of a party so inclusive, you can say this loudly in Parliament. The average family in Britain will be poorer than the average family in Poland by 2030. Exactly. That's a shocking state of affairs. In fact, if you don't compare everything in life to challenges in Poland, you might actually be racist. A man so principled, he would never betray a friend. Twice. I want to pay tribute to Jeremy Corbyn, who led our party through some really difficult times, who energised our movement, and who's a friend as well as a colleague. Or openly admit he would rather sit next to a racist, sexist, inciter of violence at a football match. Piers Morgan or Jeremy Corbyn? Piers Morgan. That, that was quick. That was quick. <laughs> that was very quick. A vehement advocate of policies with substance, taking the time to study the empty slogans of take back control and get Brexit done, leaving Sir Keir to conclude five meaningless slogans are better than one. So at the next election, when you are standing in the voting booth, and please don't forget your voter ID, deciding to put a cross next to one of these two gentlemen, remember the infamous words of Sir Keir Rodney Starmer himself. Britain deserves better. <laughs>